Hello, everyone. Welcome to Featured Teachers, brought to you by the American TESOL Institute. I'm your host, Jason Levine, also known as Fluency MC, and I'm excited to introduce you to uh, Nina English. That's her brand. She can introduce herself. She will introduce herself uh, in a few moments. We'll bring her on. Uh, she is uh, a friend and colleague, someone I've collaborated collaborated with uh, several times over the years. Uh, but it's been a while since we had a chat, so it's really great. She's our featured teacher uh, for the month of June. And we are going to be talking, as we always do, uh, about uh, her background and what she's doing. And it's just a chat. But we have a, a theme here, the best teachers teach from the heart, not from the book, which is something I, I will ask Nina, but it's something I remember uh, like a catchphrase, uh, uh, a motto that, that she's been using for uh, a long time. So uh, she's a, a wonderfully uh, experienced uh, teacher, a wonderful person. Nina, welcome to Featured Teachers. Thank you so much for being here. Well, hello, Jason. A uh, long time no see. As you said, we haven't chatted for a while. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm so honored to be here and doing this interview with you today. It's our pleasure when we started Feature Teachers, you know, you were there on the list. I'm so glad we could figure out uh, a time for you to be here. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a long time, but uh, I follow what you do uh, uh, as a teacher in social media. I'm sure there's a lot more happening than I see just in that superficial <laughs> way, which is why you're here. So um, mm -hmm. for people that don't know you, um, could you introduce yourself? Tell us you know, a bit about your background, especially how you got into to English language teaching. Absolutely. So hello, everyone. Um, I am Nina. I am from the second largest city in the Czech Republic in Central Europe. And I have been an English language teacher for the past 18 years as a freelancer. I never worked for um, uh, as an employee uh, for a school uh, or for some institution. Uh, I have been running my own show. And for the past 12, 13 years, um, I've called my brand um, Nina English because that's what most people called me uh, uh, back uh, when I started my courses. And um, I am both an English teacher and language coach and uh, a teacher trainer mentor for other language teachers, something I developed recently. Mm. Because lots of people, lots of teachers have been asking me about um, teaching without course books and freelancing at the same time as a woman, as a wor working mom. So I combine all that. So we work a lot. Uh, we talk a lot about work life balance, just like I used to with my students. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, we definitely want to hear hear about that. So, so what what inspired you to start teaching? And was it always English language teaching? Was it something mm -hmm. else you were doing? Or, well, uh, like many teachers, I never wanted to be a teacher. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I come from a teacher's family, but uh, maybe that. Uh, yeah, that was something that I didn't want to do mm. uh, as a kid. I didn't want to be like my parents, but look at me. <laughs> However, they were school teachers and um, I, I worked in a school for a little bit, but I admire all the teachers, all the school teachers. I know you do a, a lot of work, Jason, in schools and it's a lot with the teenagers. I prefer working with adults uh -huh. and uh, specifically women. Mm. Uh, because I build on my own experience, how I learned English. I am not a native speaker, uh, but I learned English the natural way, traveling, um, mm. having visitors in our home, even during communism. Mm. Uh, that, mm. That's an interesting story, maybe for another time. Okay. And um, I just um, love surrounding myself with international peoples. That's how I became interested in foreign languages. Mm. I studied other languages as well, but ended yeah. up teaching uh, English uh, because that's uh, lingua franca, uh, language yeah. number one. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And everybody needs help with it. So yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's, 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 it's not about you know learning the language to you know be a tourist in the UK or get a job in the states. Although those things can still happen, right? If it's, it's being able to, it's like using a computer. You know, it's something. Everything, yeah. Being it like uh, mo most adults that work with me, uh, they need it for their work. Uh, mm -hmm. They uh, want to get a better job, for example, or uh, they when they travel, they don't want to be dependent. And it's not just English speaking countries. Right. Anywhere. They don't want to be dependent on uh, their friends, their uh, family members. Yeah. Uh, they uh, want to enjoy their own time. And of course, everyone wants to understand music and movies and videos mm, and mm. all that you know mm, podcasts mm, mm. these days it's a big thing so yeah and if they get into uh, they want to understand them and of course they can also learn from them so it could be a you know a hopefully a very positive cycle although some people uh get stuck there and we need to help them those that can right they want if they're motivated they want to understand and they're learning then it just continues um, yes so nicely right okay. yeah cool um so so you said and i know this about you and it's just it's amazing really when you think about it, you never you never worked for anybody else it was always you on your own is that right well, I don't know about other countries, but here in the Czech Republic, even when you work uh, for a school, you usually get just a few hours here and there yeah. and you still work as a freelancer. So, of course, at the very beginning, apart from having my own clients, mm -hmm. I did work in a couple of schools, but okay. only, you know, a few right. hours here and there. But you were already working on your own. So that's, yes. that's yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. that's yeah. So that's you began on your own, which is really interesting. And 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 in terms terms of using published materials, course books and other things, is that something you started doing and then realized you didn't want to do or you exactly. also be, you also began on your own with your own stuff? No, I actually had no idea how to uh, teach because, as I said, I never wanted to be a teacher. Right. I uh, studied languages, but wanted to work for some international company, you know, travel and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. all these cool management jobs, uh, maybe. And then um, at the very beginning, uh, my very first job where uh, I um, lasted only three months because um, I didn't really like the company so much. Um, a friend from school called me, from uni, called me and said, hey, I'm pregnant and I need help. I need to hand over uh, some students. And I remembered that you just, I'd like to. Mm. I said, but I'm not a teacher. I don't know how mm. to do it. She <laughs> said, ah, here's the teacher's book and it's all there. So I had no training back then okay. and I had the teacher's book and the, uh, and the workbook and, and, and the student's book. And I kind of started figuring it out uh, from yeah. the book. And, and then I started taking some courses with British okay. Council and da, 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 but I never felt like um, it was something that I enjoyed working with course books. And I saw that it wasn't really helping my students mm. move forward. Mm. So uh, about five years into it, I got mm. rid of them completely. And I started my own uh, courses, own projects. Um, and that's how I got into this international mm. uh, community where I met you as well. And it's been wonderful from then on. Wow, great. And and when you decided you didn't want to use uh, course books anymore, were you also coming up with ideas for things? You were excited about stuff that you were working on or, or was it difficult because you didn't know really what you had a lot of ideas? I, that That's how it started, getting rid of the course books because I had too many great ideas. Okay. And I remember um, I really quit the course books when I realized at the end of the school year, I was in unit two with my students mm -hmm. because we did everything but the book. <laughs> and uh, we were doing so much great stuff. Um, usually, uh, okay, so I did have the copied materials that we mm -hmm. all do, you know, and, 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 um, and thinking of games and stuff and sure. then after we finished the proper lesson uh we used to go and watch a movie or go to a pub or go um on a trip uh oh. at the weekend or we had cooking uh cooking time with my international friends and i realized that these are just 
genius ideas for mm. because I could see that they were learning um, and enjoying it so much more mm. and progressing this way. So I thought, why not create courses based on these experiential, sure, these sure. experiential lessons? And that's and how I, I started. Yeah, well, and I, I, I'm I'm quite sure people watching this who haven't done that are thinking, wow, of course, of course, that makes so much sense. Is But is there is there anything about it that they should know that is you know, challenging about it or not as easy as it sounds kind of thing? I don't know for me because I love it. I, I and I'm always in the flow when I do this. It, mm -hmm. it feels easy, but for other people, it might feel uh, quite overwhelming, especially if they're not extroverts like myself mm -hmm. and they're not out there, then mm. they might think of um, more introverted um, ideas for, for their courses and lessons. Mm. And we're all different and it's fine. You can still work without course books if you're not me, sure. uh, if you're not uh, an extrovert like Jason, for example. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, work, working with our course books doesn't mean uh materials exactly. desi designed around out you know activities you know in 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 real life which is a great thing there's other things it, you can do too but you i mean do you so think many things but the most important thing is not to be afraid to go deep inside mm. maybe take a long evening walk or uh evening with a glass of wine just really go deep Mm -hmm. and think about what you love because mm -hmm. when you start from who you are and your authentic self that what you want to do how you want your work to feel mm -hmm. then it's easy from there so maybe Great going enough. deep can yeah. be difficult at the beginning especially if you're not used to it mm -hmm. uh, if you're used to other people telling you what to do or looking in the course book and following the units uh, but I'm sure everyone's a little bit like um, dissatisfied or mm -hmm. angry with this part of uh, their work or this part of the lesson right. uh, true or I used to hate gapful exercises mm -hmm. you know and I was like how can I do it differently mm -hmm. uh, so it, it can start, it, it can slowly build up and it can be anything. You, you don't have to be doing crazy things like mm -hmm. me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's also, I mean, we're talking about how you, just the, the pedagogy side of what you do and how, and, and, and with course books, but you also, you're, you have your own, your own business, right? It's just, is it just you? I mean, did you, you started off obviously just you, has it always been just you or do you have people working with you or for you or how does that work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I, we can never do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Uh, we need each other to help each other uh, grow and uh, build better projects, uh, better courses in our mm. case as language teachers. So of course I've been working with a lot of other teachers, mm. um, but also um, people who are not teachers and help me with admin, invoicing, mm. uh, building a website, marketing, right. uh, copywriting. Recently, mm. I realized I need to um, improve my texts on my website if you want to attract the right client who is really motivated and dedicated. Yeah. You need to word it well. And um, I've been so fortunate to, to, uh, to attract both amazing, absolutely amazing clients but also uh, my coworkers, my, mm. my colleagues for both my team, but not just my team, but people who just work with me, you know, on this one project or another project. Mm. We do lots of things with other teachers. And, and do, you, so do, you, do you enjoy that part of it or you realize you just have to do the business part in order to enjoy what you're doing with materials development and teaching? Or do you like wearing different hats like i love wearing different okay. hats i i would be bored if i was doing just <laughs> one thing okay. and sometimes i feel like i um i prefer the the teaching part uh creating uh, courses that's my absolute uh favorite uh activity uh to create a course a course design uh how to put it all together um who 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 to offer it to mm -hmm. but then 
uh, when I put it up on my website and, and I created uh, a website uh, that I love, it's colorful and being there and doing the marketing side of things and networking side of things and just talking about my work like I am mm -hmm. doing now, mm -hmm. it, it just brings so much joy to my heart as well. So it's both, it's both, both uh, entre entrepreneurship and yeah. Uh, teaching. Yeah, that's the key to have passion for, for all of it. Yeah. And, okay. and looking at your website and looking at what you do, um, you, you obviously work with a lot of uh, women learners. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Is that, but is that some exclusive thing you do? Because I know there, I, I can think of a couple other uh, English teachers that really just focus on uh teaching teaching to women learners is is that would you say it's exclusive i mean um not my overall business because okay. i run courses for individual clients where it's for I both see. genders but for groups it's, i run it's... i run courses for kids mm -hmm. again both genders okay. but these specific group courses offline courses for women mm -hmm. are uh for, uh for women i already said it <laughs> Uh, and was uh, that something was that something that you sort of came up with as a as a strategy my or it just happened came up with it my students came up with it uh the best and so basically all my uh all my courses or all my services are created uh because of what uh my clients wanted they're mm -hmm. based on their needs and mm -hmm. i recommend all the teachers and all all business people to do it just listen to uh your clients and yeah. what they need so they came to me after so the very first course i did uh without course books uh it was for anyone so both mm -hmm. genders but at the end of the course the women from the group came to me and they said nina uh, we have something to ask you. Uh, you know, we felt so much better whenever it was just us women. It happened mm. that, you know, there were no guys in the group. Maybe they were mm -hmm. sick or on a business trip or they were just <laughs> women. Yeah. Um, the atmosphere is different and we feel so much more at ease when we speak. Uh, we don't feel um, that we need to, you know, uh, be... Uh, quite cautious about what we say uh, right. we feel that we can be vulnerable and cry and laugh and whatever yeah, and yeah. we don't have to uh, wear the perfect makeup all that could you please try to build mm -hmm. a group for women only and when and was that just to get some context when what year was that approximately um, 2010 2010 okay. so about 10 years ago over 10 years ago 12 12 years ago yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So wow. I did, and I and I I never went back. Uh -huh. I tried one. Okay, I did try one group uh, for guys, uh -huh. and I guys had, only, guys only, okay. guys only, and that was just too much testosterone for me. And um, <laughs> I had other colleagues uh, teach uh, the group, okay. and the guys okay. loved it. But then when I promoted it second time, we didn't no. fill up the group. It was obvious that. I should be teaching women and yeah. I have been ever since. And I don't know how many, maybe uh, 180 groups, 200 groups by now. I've, wow. I've thought because uh, obviously there were several that I, I um, speak uh, about this in the past tense because um, all of that happened before COVID and then mm. after the pandemic. Uh, now I, I will see, but mm. uh, during mm. the pandemic, we were online, of course, but it was minimized. So yeah. that's why I speak uh, in past tense. So right, right. that's where yeah. it led me and I'll see where it goes from now. I actually have a, um, a full day uh, coming back to it a little bit because I miss it. Mm -hmm. I have a full day on Sunday uh, with an international guest here, women only full day with mm. um, with a group of women in my garden. So is that the first time since the yeah. pandemic craziness? Yeah. Yes. For oh, wow, students, that's... for so teachers, that's... I've been doing something uh, the the whole two three years. Yeah. Also offline because that's where my uh, focus is now yeah but for students yes it's the first time and I cannot wait it always fills me up with yeah. so much uh, 
joy from yeah. life in general. Cool. And and um, let's. I want to talk to you about what you've been doing with teachers uh, in a moment. Yeah. But uh, so so how uh, so do most most people that you teach they find out about you different ways like word of mouth or website and that kind of thing and, and they, are they all local i guess they'd have to be somewhat local or if it's all in person yeah for for the courses in brno of course but i've had students coming from 200 kilometers away once a week every wow, that's amazing. week that's once amazing. i did a summer course uh summer course where we had it twice a week and i had a lady coming twice a week 100 kilometers so 200 every time wow. 100 there 100 <laughs> back and wow. then in two days same thing Amazing. and that always just <sighs> yeah wow wow that that that's beyond <laughs> anything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes local mainly local and uh they find out about it from the people who have already taken the courses mm, it's mm. always the best promotion sure. word of mouth i would say 80 percent of people come because somebody else uh has been here but i also have uh of course i'm active on social media i have instagram facebook mm. page youtube channel uh i write a blog i send a newsletter all of that that we freelancers um do right. to keep our uh business running Great. And is anything you do? I know you don't have you don't have any online only courses, right? Just it's all in person, or do you have things that people can do just online? Uh, not in the not in the moment. I I did during the pandemic. Yes, uh -huh. we had um, several groups uh, for women. Right. But uh, what I see now is that the type of students that I help um, uh, with their English. Uh, they are people who want to meet uh, offline. They're even uh, willing to travel and come here to Brno uh, mm -hmm. or I can come somewhere else. Um, but uh, they don't really want to be online because that's all they have been doing the past mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. And um, they want to be meeting uh, in person again. And um, we yeah, have done courses online for women, but it, it, it's not the same thing. Yes, right. we could to Together. Yes, we danced together. We did all these spiritual things in our living rooms, our kitchens, and there was a certain magic to it, of course. Mm -hmm. And we all had to survive this time. So we actually kept each other company. I had a course for uh, evening time with a glass of wine mm -hmm. uh, and the women appreciated it so much because <laughs> they were just exhausted from helping the kids uh, yeah. on, with online school and being the whole family all together. So they really appreciated it, appreciated it. Mm -hmm. but that's, that's over now. So yeah. I'll, I'll see what, 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 what happens I'm doing. Next? But yeah. many of us from our community um, are staying online. Uh, the teachers I know from the community that um, I'm very active in, uh, mm -hmm. they are, many of them are not going back offline because mm. they're from smaller cities, smaller, smaller places. Right. And they don't have so many people who could commute to them. Yeah. So it's great that it happened for them. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's why I, was, I guess I was asking about the, the distance thing because it's great if people can come from small towns, but you just said like people, uh, some of them are just continuing online because it's easier for them to get business, I would think, right? If, yeah. if you're not in a central place, but um, do, do you just, do your students, oh, that's interesting, but I want to go back to something I was going to ask you about online. Do, 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 you, do the students who meet in person do anything online? Like there's supporting materials or activities oh, or things. So yeah. in between lessons, it's not like, it's not like they're just with you this day, then in two days, they're doing English practice with, with Nina English materials um, um, online or? We, I have a few uh, materials, but okay. I don't specialize in uh, creating uh, digital materials so okay. much. I have okay. some, I have uh, educational videos, I have some uh, worksheets and uh, workbooks, but uh, I'd say, uh, with me and uh, the courses that I run, it's much more about them. 
Mm. I don't supply them with so much because each person is different. So yeah. uh, I, it, I um, include a lot of language coaching principles and uh, goal setting mm. strategies. And then it's focused on each of the individual students and they agree uh, with themselves, basically, with my support, that they will be doing this or this or this or this. And each okay. of them has a slightly different journey. However, every course has um, a private Facebook group. Um, if uh, we want to share something, um, uh, either the students or the teachers, uh, there are always several guest teachers in the course. Mm -hmm. So we communicate with the students also mm. uh, outside of the synchronous time that we learn together in the classroom or the city because we go everywhere or the pubs or parks mm. it's mm. Uh, or dance studio or someone's home the mm. teachers homes the students homes we bake we cook we do all sorts of stuff uh, but in between uh, it's so important. It's absolutely crucial that they are doing something. Sure. So what we usually advise them to do is pair up with a study buddy from the group or not even necessarily from the group, but it's the best way to have, um, you know, to have somebody to, to talk to mm. um, and be accountable to. <laughs> Mm, mm. Is it ever unnatural for them because English is in the first language? If if you're not around or somebody's not around to create that atmosphere, would, would they they'll they'll do stuff in English or they will they, they will. will because um, from day number one, even before they enter the course, we communicate in English only. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first call, the first contact with me is partly in Czech and then I switch to English because okay. I want to hear their English. Right. We start at uh, pre-intermediate level. So this is not for um, basic level students or right. beginners. We start at um, A2 level and then they are able to communicate with me even mm -hmm. on the phone. Maybe yeah. for some of them, it's for, their, for the first time yeah. on the phone. Yeah. And then... Uh, the email instructions, uh, mm. the the Google documents, everything, the Facebook group, everything is in English. Mm -hmm. So when they even very often, even before they enter, I hear them in the hall already speaking, <laughs> even before the first lesson, nice. speaking wow. to each other in English because I create the Facebook group before about a week or two weeks before we start the course. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I uh, ask them, I encourage them to introduce themselves, maybe make a video or post pictures, talk about themselves uh, so they would already know each other a little bit before mm. they enter to feel less afraid you know how people can sure. feel quite nervous about entering a new group of people and it's this experiential course what are we going to be doing there i'm scared yeah, it's yeah? so this way they feel much more comfortable with each other and um it i feel um it's my biggest accomplishment when i go to the toilet or i go um, I, I forget something uh, in my home. I live in the same building where I have my classroom. Maybe I could show you some pictures. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I run something uh, for something upstairs. I come back and they're still speaking English. Uh -huh. So I create that environment. Yeah. Um, and very often they report to me in the following lesson that they kept talking to yeah. each other on the way to the tram stop or bus stop <laughs> just or in the car. If they give each other yeah. a lift, for example, if they live in the same neighborhood, they keep speaking English. Yeah. How cool uh, is that? It's super cool. Yeah. Could you show us some pictures now? They're getting curious. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Just to give you an idea, maybe that would be. Uh, fun. So I have uh, quite a few pictures from the groups here. So you can see uh, this is actually my sec historically second group. Uh, but what so year is this I, approximately I again? Like just 2011. Okay, 2011. Okay, summer yeah. 2011, and uh, this is why I look so much younger and I have short hair here. You remember me? I you? remember. This is about around the time we met. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
Um, so this is in my kitchen. This was actually, this is overlooking the main square of Brno. We, uh, this was a final lesson. So we had a party. You can see okay. some drinks here. Uh, we drank a little bit of alcohol. You know, it always helps to speak English better, right? That's and a this fact. is overlooking the main square. One of the guest teachers on the course had a flat there, an okay. American guy. Uh, so we invaded him. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and it was it was always great to have lessons there. This is in my home. This is actually in my kitchen with uh, another group. And this is in my classroom. And in the middle here, the lady with the thumbs up, that's actually one of my guest teachers, uh, originally from Turkey. Mm -hmm. So I highly support non-native speakers mm -hmm. um, as uh, English teachers, because I myself am a non-native speaker, although I sp I work with native speakers as well. Um, why not work with a Turkish lady whose English is amazing, great uh, education background, CELTA, you know, qualified everything. So this is without students. Yeah, this is my uh, classroom. There is a garden you can see in a bit. This is what it looks like with students. We often there's a there's a screen on the on the wall because we often watch videos or mm -hmm. Skype. Uh, Sky, I see. I say Skype now. It's Zoom. Zoom with <laughs> with uh, with teachers uh, from, and other students from around the world. For example, uh, we had a great lesson uh, zooming uh, with some kids from Malaysia uh, with uh, oh, cool. Anita from Malaysia. You know Anita. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, so yeah, we cooperate uh, on uh, different projects across the globe. Yeah. So, so great. Yeah. As you can see, uh, they're often working in uh, small groups. Uh, this is in my home. This is my living room. This is where I am right now. Okay. <laughs> this is cool. my workspace uh, in the morning. <laughs> uh -huh. And we eat a lot of food. Uh -huh. This is from a weekend course, a 20 hour intensive course. We eat a lot. We picnic a lot. We this is in my kitchen again, uh, pre uh, preparing Turkish coffee because again, the Turkish teacher. So yeah. we learn a lot about culture together with the, uh, with the uh, topics. Yeah, with uh -huh. the English topics. So this is in my garden again in the garden so people love to come in the summer or this is a big big uh, event we have uh -huh. another park so we we'll use the outside another guest teacher we use the city yeah we take city walks and students have to show us around or show other international uh, um, international guests or uh -huh. this is a group of tourists this is a group of American tourists and uh, these ladies they were at pre-intermediate level um, and they did it wow they were so scared wow. and they did it the ladies so cool. loved them then they ended up sitting in a cafe <laughs> uh, having cakes and coffee so and cool. they just yeah. who's this where's this um, this is uh, one of the pub lessons that is one of my favorite lessons where I invite my international friends. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see there's guys as well. It's not just the course is for women, but the teachers and the guests are men and women all together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I invite people from different countries um, and we just... Uh, dive right into it and people are scared at the beginning but um then uh, after this lesson which is actually the second lesson of the course always they tell me how surprised they were how nice it was how easy it was to speak with other people in english and yeah. uh, there goes their confidence skyrocketing and uh when you do it in um in a cozy environment yeah. with, with very friendly atmosphere the energy is very high and um you know maybe there is a glass of wine as well uh yeah. we are adults we can talk about that yeah um it's so easy in the end and after 12 weeks or 15 weeks they come out completely transformed mm. not just with their speaking skills but their self-confidence mm. and you know we 
us women, we always need a confidence boost. Yeah. So doing it over a nice uh, glass of wine or uh, a meal and having a good time, um, maybe even playing some games uh, like you do in school. See, we do have these uh, flashcards or slips of paper uh, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's in a cafe or in mm. uh, some cool bar and uh, then they feel much more relaxed because yeah. it's not in a classroom with school desks yeah there's music uh, this is one of my uh, colleagues in the past uh, they uh, put songs together and then they sang them um, incredible stuff shopping lesson uh, people <laughs> go and uh, have um, assignments like you should wear something for a party or New Year's Eve or Christmas, and then you have to take a picture and mm -hmm. then come back all together and describe your experience, always speaking English with the shopping assistant. So they right. come back shocked, like, oh, the shopping assistants, they, they ran away from us when we were speaking English. So they self-reflect what it's <laughs> like for a Czech person as well. We do, of course, Christmas parties and all sorts of Halloween parties and this is dancing in my living room before we started renting our studios uh -huh. uh, but now we rent out studios and uh, baking with an Australian teacher um, uh, always always cooking is uh, my favorite lesson uh -huh. because I just sit and I watch the action happen oh, and there's so it. much language that can be practiced too. yes and I just write stuff on the board and the teacher the guest teacher is helping them cook the helping with the recipe this is the coffee again and predicting the future predicting the future for fortune telling yeah uh -huh. from, uh, from <laughs> nice. coffee nice look we have like a there's a dictionary look at this okay. a dictionary and this is how you should um, you know fortune tell when you are with a turkish person <laughs> Wow, very they cool. love it. They love it. They come out with so many experiences. So they often want to come back. Yoga, I, I, we do yoga, meditation, imagine. guided meditation for uh, their English journey. Uh, makeup, we do makeup workshops. Yeah, it's good. women love that. And then they yeah. talk about everything connected to um, image and right. uh body and here is a pottery class you know i you can see we do everything welding yeah, I can see. <laughs> jewelry this, is, this this was uh making jewelry with uh -huh. a british guest teacher wow. uh yeah see, this great. is a great great picture which shows um the women in a company in a factory uh, of hot air balloons where uh, the lady in the middle uh, is uh, working there and is telling us all about it. She's the student of the course. So she actually needs this for her international visitors. Okay. Take them around. So she's practicing with us. And we are so excited because she tells us all about uh, uh, production of hot air balloons. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So you can see uh, here uh, the topics and uh, one important thing maybe for the teachers. Yes. Elicit, elicit, elicit the topics from the clients, from the mm. students, even if they're kids. Ask them what they want to do and mm. then put it together with your ideas. You can tell them, OK, I have some ideas, but what are your ideas? And they always have ideas. Sure. So we co-create the course. And that's what makes it even more um intense uh, an intense experience for them of and course me a meaningful experience yeah, yeah. Well, well, can we, can we, we talk sorry sorry go on no i was just gonna i just wanted to make sure i asked you about teachers because you, you you mentioned earlier that for the last few years you've been focusing on working with teachers you've mentioned guest teachers yeah uh, is is that is that how is that where the connection uh came like to I don't want to presume maybe you just tell me are you doing teacher training now is that sort of and is that is that linked to the okay. fact that you were bringing in these different teachers or can you tell us about that um well i have been working with the teachers on my team for years yeah right, so right. it didn't really come from that so okay. much although a little bit but what it actually started was all these women from different parts of the Czech Republic, Slovak Republic, and even from abroad, mm -hmm. um, emailing me 
uh, that they saw something on YouTube, they heard something from someone, they read my blog post, they saw pictures and videos on my social media, mm. and um, they want to know how I do it and mm-hmm. how I combine it with uh, being a mom. Mm. And mm-hmm. I started receiving more and more of these requests for uh, personal consultations with okay. them. And I thought that uh, we are all alone in this women always feel feel a bit lonely in everything freelancers always feel uh, alone uh, especially if they're in small cities so uh, instead of giving uh, only individual consultations which I started about three years ago I finally felt confident enough experienced Mm. enough that I can pass this on and um, and and speak about it and and uh, help uh, and give advice. Right. But I decided to uh, create a community, a club for English language teachers, okay. women only. Again, it's women only uh-huh. uh, who need to feel that they are part of something. Who 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 need a platform where they can both educate themselves and share their life life stories and get support. And this is uh, in person, or this is online, or it's both. This is. Uh, oh, I, I started preparing this before the pandemic happened. Okay. And uh, then the pandemic happened. Yeah. So we started online, but okay. we meet offline as well. I, Whenever it was possible, uh, no more lockdown for right. two or three months, we, we would have an offline meeting. And there are, there, are, there are enough teachers in your area uh, near Brno? To, it's not to... just my area. They come all the way, like five, they would travel five hours here, five oh. hours back wow. just to wow. be at that meeting. Wow. Um, uh, we just had a lady, uh, a, a Czech teacher who resides in Edinburgh, in Scotland, mm-hmm. who came to uh, my a language teachers festival to a conference I started wow. organizing wow. Wow, uh, a month ago. She came and I was in tears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. She so met cool. us for the first time, although she's been part of the uh, part of the community. Hi, Yuka. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this. I love you. <laughs> so do you do you see going forward uh, this this club developing in any oh, yeah. way? Oh, yeah. How oh, yeah. how do you Absolutely. see it developing? Well, uh, we've been running it now for two and a half years Mm -hmm. and uh, more and more people uh, are interested and more and more people are coming to join uh, Mm -hmm. because uh, we don't just talk about uh, teaching uh, and methodology, how to teach without course books, how to go about language coaching. Language coaching is a big thing in in my methodology. How to teach without, uh, you know, materials, dogma, ELT, uh, Mm -hmm. strong, strong uh, um, uh, inspiration Scott Thornbury. Mm-hmm. Uh, I uh, I love the no uh, no materials approach. So we do that, but we also invite uh, business mentors and people from marketing and um, um, inspiring and successful entrepreneurs mm-hmm. who share with us their stories, who share with us their tips, mm-hmm. how their business grew, not just necessarily uh, in language teaching, but all areas Mm -hmm. and these uh, teachers who are part of this community they can learn so much on the way right. both for methodology and and freelancing and at the same time because we're all women many of us have kids at the same time also focus on work-life balance so there are mm-hmm. these three pillars mm-hmm. that I believe are absolutely crucial for a freelance uh, language teacher mm-hmm. who happens to be a woman right you know child girl that i know daddies do a lot these days as well <laughs> like you but uh it's still a lot especially in more traditional Fourth. cultures like ours it's still a lot on the woman mm. and uh we always have this fight and a feeling of guilt inside if we, if we prefer to work mm. instead of being with the kids so yeah. we yeah. talk about all that and it's so so helpful feeling like you know you can be growing together and you always have somebody to to ask or to complain to you know yeah wow very cool very cool and um do you to to do this club do you have i mean you're working with teachers are there people helping you like sort of like 
organize these things or is this all on you like all absolutely over? again i okay. couldn't do this alone okay. yes i am the creator and the main organizer and the main mentor consultant mm. all of that but i uh have wonderful uh mainly from the community actually yeah wonderful... i was gonna say if you're working with these people and you're forming this kind of bond with of them. course of yeah. course so uh one teacher is helping me put all the topics together that we discussed during the month and categorize mm. them into uh, units in uh, on in the Facebook group. That's what you can do when you have a social learning group, mm -hmm. uh, or put a report because I send out a monthly report uh, to for those who maybe uh, couldn't uh, be on Facebook that month so much or couldn't because Facebook can be quite uh, messy the newsfeed. So sure. maybe they didn't catch everything. So I put a monthly report together. So I have somebody who is very good at copywriting and is mm. helping me and uh, I have people who help me uh, organize the language teachers festival of course I could I we can never do something just mm. by ourselves mm, mm, mm. I always say stronger together so yeah. big thanks to all the ladies that are helping me thank you so so much it means the world to me I couldn't do this without you if if uh a new teacher is watching and we have a lot of new teachers who watch or people who are training to be teachers and mm -hmm. they're thinking they might want to do something on their own would you would you say just go ahead and do it or would you say that maybe they should do something else first because it might be too difficult to start off on your own what, what would your advice be well from what i have seen what i have experienced in in my life what i have seen with the teachers working in my team on the courses that we run here uh, but also in in the community of teachers it's not a bad idea uh, to start with a couple of language schools or mm. agencies or one you know one or two uh, to um, supplement uh, the you know the the lessons to mm -hmm. you mm. because uh, starting from the very beginning and stressing out so much about attracting enough clients. Yeah, it takes time. Never look for clients. Mm -hmm. We attract clients with mm -hmm. our work, okay? Mm -hmm. Never mm -hmm. go look for them. Yeah. Don't chase them. Like women shouldn't chase men. You attract them. Mm -hmm. So, sorry about that. It's, like no, it's good advice. It is, it is. So just be your best self, best teacher, Put up, put out stuff on social media. Put out stuff on your websites. Mm. Build a very, very simple website, mm. or become a part of some catalog for teachers. You know, like say that you're out there, and don't feel bad about starting with um, a, a teaching platform or an agency next to your private clients. Mm. And mm. the oh, teachers always ask me, so where do I get my first pri private clients? Just tell people you're doing it. Tell your friends, tell yeah. your family, tell people on your personal profile on Facebook. Just say, hey, I am about to finish my training or I have just finished my training and I would like to offer you my time and mm -hmm. maybe say something like, okay, for uh, the discounted price because I'm starting. Sure. Uh, yeah. you, can, you can have these amazing lessons with me. Always mm -hmm. speak positively about it. But here I am already giving it too much advice, unsolicited advice. <laughs> no, this is fantastic advice. I'm, I'm just thinking if, if you, know, you do so much locally, which is wonderful, and you've talked about how people come uh, locally doesn't mean just right where you are, hundreds of kilometers away. Uh, but if people are watching, you know, in different parts of the world, are there ways that they can collaborate with you or? Always, <laughs> always look at the pandemic. That's what we did. Yeah. For two right. Years. And but I mean, uh, let's say the pandemic's over. Let's just say theoretically, you don't, you know, you can continue in person. It's it really, what if somebody's in Taiwan or in Argentina, like what? If they, if they can they be part of the club as a teacher yes. can they be a yes, student we, of we yours? actually How does that have work? international we now have international uh teachers okay. um and they don't necessarily have to be here if it's okay for them to uh not come to the mm -hmm. offline meetings we have about let around four to six offline meetings per year so I it's see. not that much 
to okay. miss out on. And of course, mm -hmm. it's always better in, in person. And we have some in-person workshops and mm -hmm. courses and this conference. But now we started having international uh, participants at the conference as well, for okay. like this festival. And because we are all uh, on this platform, Facebook groups, uh, anybody can join. So, mm -hmm. and we actually want international teachers to join us more and more now because we want uh, international perspective. Yeah, I can imagine. We want to hear, we right. want to hear from other teachers what their struggles are mm. and uh, from the, the interviews that I have been doing with international teachers, including yourself in the club, mm. we can see that it's very similar everywhere around the world. Recently, we had a, an interview with a teacher from Malaysia who is also our club member. And uh, we have American teachers um, joining our club. So it's international now and we actually meet um, every month on Zoom for at mm. least two hours to, you know, meet each other at least on the screen to discuss Great. whatever they want to discuss. And there's always like the main topic, uh, for example, preparing for the low season. Now mm -hmm. summer is coming. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare for the low season? So that already happened sometime in April. Yeah, I see. Okay. Get ready for it. Uh, we have another one next Monday. Then we are meeting offline. So that month when we're meeting offline, we don't have an online meeting. But mm. other than that, we always have an online meeting on Zoom and anybody can join. Wow. It's so great to see you doing so well, so busy and helping so many people. Can you can you show us your website before we go? Um, actually, um, or, yeah, yeah, sure. Just uh, give and is me that a and the best way for people to to contact you? Uh, best way to contact me is probably on my Facebook uh, profile. So if you give me a second. Sure, yeah. Um, Don't worry, we're going to cut this part out. Yes, okay. The thing is that my website, I just hid the English uh, translation of the website okay. because... Um, You're I working was, on it because I wasn't updating it. We and don't have to show it, and I can cut the part out where I said about the website. Don't yeah, we? I wouldn't be showing my website. What's huh. much better to show is my Instagram. Can I show okay. my Instagram? Yeah, know? yeah. Oh, it is. Um, so I would show both Instagram for the club and for Nina English. Because okay, I if you could do those two things, and then we'll finish. I think that's, that's the cool. most updated okay. that I normally... Uh, where is it? Here. Okay. All right. So am I sharing it yet? Not no. yet. Okay, here. Okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll start talking first then. Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay, cool. So this is your Instagram for teachers or students? Um, or is it both? Is, this is my school. This is Nina English. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is the best uh, place uh, to contact me and see uh, my work. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Great. You can, so if, if people message you there, that's also good, can, like better than email. You can message the me there um, for uh, the, so you can see my work here. I post a lot of stories and reels mm. and um, and posts, and this is for the teachers. Okay. Uh, in Czech, it's called uh, Klub Lektorek, Teachers Club, yeah, of English. Mm -hmm. And uh, here I have um, a lot of pictures here from uh, our uh, most recent meeting, the Language Teachers Festival. So you can see uh, many of the teachers, not just from the club, mm -hmm. but of course, you don't need to be a member of the club to attend our events. Yeah, you can always join um, at the offline events. It's always cheaper for the club members, of mm. course. But uh, yeah, we do a lot. As you can see, just like with the students, we go out, we take city yeah. walks, we have fun together. And uh, this is uh, to show you how we meet on Zoom. Okay. And these are people from all around the country and Slovakia. I see some Slovak ladies here as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. We, the webinars, we have lots of webinars. There are at the moment around 60 webinars already recorded in the club on everything, uh, <clears throat> everything teaching and freelancing and 
personal as well. So, so if a woman is a teacher and wherever she is she, and she wants to join, the best thing is to message you on Instagram. Yeah, that would probably be best. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll okay. take her. And if the they don't time. have Instagram or they don't use Instagram. If they, okay, of course, of course. If you don't have Instagram, you can find me on Facebook as well. Uh, let me... And if they don't use Meta. <laughs> if they don't use Meta, of course, uh, they can uh, message me uh, via, they can email me, okay. Nina at ninaenglish.cz. Uh, oh, that's easy. My website at the moment is in Czech only, but okay. there is a contact form. Uh, let okay. me show you. I'm, I'm sharing now, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's coming up. So this is my website and here okay, is... Okay, so they can just go to, go to Nina English. Contact, and message. yeah. And you just write your name, email, and okay. here is... Da -da 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 -da. Nice. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. Nina, thanks a million for being here. That was really uh, a great, great chat. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been too long, so I'm glad, I'm glad we did it. And I'm, I'm just thinking of, of things maybe in the future we could do. Uh, so I'll, I'll talk to you about that. But it'd be great to showcase uh, more, you know, uh, kind of video or interviews, of the things you've been doing so people yeah, can really see. I would it. love to. I have but, so much to share. Yeah, I know. So, so, so I can like talk about teaching uh, kids without uh, books online. Yeah. We have courses. I didn't even mention that. Yeah, I, I, we have I, I, online <laughs> courses, offline courses for kids as well. And I'm sure uh, that's very interesting um, yeah. for teachers. And it's something that's missing on the market outside of uh, public schools. Of no, course. you're absolutely right. There are not enough courses for kids yeah. whose uh, English lessons at school aren't that great and their parents want to invest. Yeah. And they don't, uh, they don't know where to, who to turn to. So uh, I'd love to talk about that as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I have a feeling we will be, yeah. Definitely. Okay. All, right. All right. Thank you well, for inviting thanks me. Thanks again. Me. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nina. And uh, thanks so to the American TESOL Institute for uh, doing feature teachers and uh, uh, giving me the, the privilege of hosting. We'll be back here next month for another edition of Feature Teachers. So wherever you are in the world, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Take care. Love, yeah. Yeah. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.